Hey guys, today I'm gonna do a little bit of a different tutorial than I normally do because normally I do Sony Vegas tutorials, but people have been asking me how to get good, you know, vocal audio on their videos, and I thought it, that would be very good for for a tutorial. Um, and there's two ways you can do this. You can use Sound Booth. This is what I use, and you can use Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a free program, uh, and Sound Booth isn't. But before we go into how I record all this stuff, I want to go into microphones. Now, I'm using a condenser microphone. It's called an Audio Technica AT2020 USB. So it's a USB condenser mic. Uh, you can also use USB headsets with a, a USB mic. I do not recommend using your onboard sound card with a, just a standard headset. Most of the time, why the hell? Get out of here. Uh, I, my PC doesn't like it when I record. I'm using Bandicam. Normally I use Camtasia, but I do not recommend that you use uh, a normal, uh, just headset mic, just a normal headset mic in your onboard sound card because there's a lot of background noise on those. So if you have a USB headset with a USB microphone, and by that I mean that the USB headset has its own dedicated sound card inbuilt. Uh, then use those because those sound way, way, way better. But I would highly recommend getting, if you're really, really into making videos and you're trying to, to you know, make good quality videos and have good quality audio on your videos, then I would highly recommend getting a, a condenser mic, uh, possibly even a USB condenser mic like mine. But, but uh, let's get on with the tutorial on how to actually record all this stuff. Um, I prefer Sound Booth over Audacity, and there's a few reasons why. I'm, why the hell? Do not ask me this again. Thank you. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> I'm not used to using this to capture my screen. So ho hopefully the, the, the actual both audio and visual quality is going to be up to par. But yeah, um, I prefer Sound Booth over Audacity, and th there's a reason why. But I'll get into that in, in a little bit. This, but this is what I use to, to get good audio quality on my uh, on my mic. And as you probably can hear, there's a little bit of an echo going on. That's because I have really high ceiling. So ideally, I shouldn't really be recording in my living room. I should have a, an office or something where there wouldn't be all this echo going on. But other than that, um, I use this to record. And um, once you get into the program, it looks like this. You might have two tracks. You can de just delete one of them or both of them and go up to the editor here or something. I, I believe there's something up here where you can choose or to make it look like this. Um, but yeah, so you just click on the, the record button below here. In here, you don't wanna mess with anything, okay? And don't turn your mics up too loud, guys. Don't turn them up too loud. Mine is set up to 15 out of 100, my mic right now. And um, don't mess around with these settings right here. Uh, the sample rate, um, either choose 40, 44,100 or 48,000. Don't go below that because then your, your audio is going to start sounding really bad. Uh, and above that, there's no reason to do so because no one can hear the, or tell the difference anyways. But um, I'm going to keep mine at 48,000 uh, channel stereo or mono doesn't really matter. Um, you should ideally record in mono, but I'll just re record in stereo. That's what I've done in the past. Um, and choose your, your USB microphone, whether it be the headset or a USB condenser mic, doesn't really matter. Make sure that's selected. Do not monitor input during recording because then you'll hear yourself while you're recording your voice and that's gonna be really, really annoying and awkward. Um, save a place where you want it. Um, yeah, ch yeah, choose a place where you want your stuff saved. I choose uh, an, a, an extra internal hard drive. I don't record directly to the C drive um, just because I, I don't want to put too much strain on my C drive. So I just use an, an, an extra drive to record stuff on. I, I do that with videos as well. But, um, but yeah, once you've set this up, I mean, it should probably set it up uh, itself up by, you know, automatically, but just in case, you know, just make sure that you have the right device selected that you're recording from. 
I uh, before I push record down here, I want to say that it is a good idea to stay quiet for the first four seconds or five seconds or so, because there might be a little background noise on it. So you can do some noise reduction, find a point where there's no no actual voice recorded. But um, but yeah, let's try recording something. This is an audio test. Okay, so um, we got that recorded, we can click close. Now, I don't know if you can see this that well, but in here, the waveforms are, well, this is the waveform. This is where I'm saying something, and this is the part where I wasn't saying anything, right? So what I normally do is I select a part like this, check the loop down here, and then uh, play it, just to make sure. I don't know if you guys can hear the noise on this because I'm gonna do noise reduction on it and uh, stuff like that, but yeah. I'm just gonna show you the process. So if you can hear it, fine. If not, too bad. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna play it and stay quiet. So if you could just hear that, um, that there, there's some background noise going on. This that's because the 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 USB mic here, my condenser mic, is picking up the the fans in my PC and all that shit. Um, so yeah, you want that removed. So you can do that very simply by just going over here and clicking, you don't have to be under tasks, click clean up audio, click on that, and then capture noise print. And that's the, that's the, the noise that's within this region right here, right? So you capture noise print. If you had like a 15 minute video or something, you might have to zoom in by scrolling with your scroll wheel and then go to a point like here and then do like that and then uh, capture noise print from there. If you just see see what happens when I, why did I just do that, control C. Um, if I just uh, click on noise then right now, I don't think it selected the entire thing. I only think it will select this stuff right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna zoom all the way out, double click to select everything and then go into noise. Now, I've seen other tutorials on this where people do it the opposite way of what I'm doing. And I don't suggest you do that. Um, I have, with my microphone, I found out that setting the, the reduction in percentage to uh, 80% and then uh, the re reduction by to 15 decibels works perfect for my microphone. It might vary a little bit uh, depending on how much noise you have on your microphone or, and how much it picks up. Uh, so you might have to toy around with this. But the other tutorials that I've seen on YouTube, they, these people are suggesting that you set the, the percentage really low and the, uh, the decibels really high. I do not recommend doing that. There's a really, really big chance on your voice starting to sound robotic if you do so. So uh, take the, uh, yeah, the percentage somewhat high and then the reduction by like halfway, 15% or so, or 15 decibels. You can preview it. Uh, I'm not gonna do so. I'm just gonna click OK to that, and boom. If we're gonna play the in this about the same portion again, let's do that. No noise whatsoever. It's it's gone. It's all gone. Now there's another thing I do with my audio, uh, and that is I I add a compressor to it. And uh, here's why. See the waveforms here? Here I'm speaking somewhat loud and here I'm not speaking as loud anymore. The compressor tries to even out the levels of your waveform. That, therefore, if you're speaking at a higher volume at one point, uh, it will try to lower it a little bit. And if you're speaking really low, it will try to like make it a little more clear. That way people can always hear what you're saying in your videos. And um, this is very awesome. Another really good reason why to use compression is let's say that you were, let's say, let's just do this just as an example. Let's say that at this point right here, you were playing a horror game or something and you were recording your audio and something really, really terrible happened and you yell or scream or cry <laughs> or something like that. And you do that really loud and then bam, shit peaks like that. That's called a peak when it goes above, then it will distort. By adding the compressor, 
to it, it will lower it. So it, it will might it might still sound a little bit distorted, but it will lower the um, the waveform down to like this, for example, so that you won't blow people's eardrums out. And that is very, very awesome. So if you just double click on the whole thing and go up to effects, click on processor, I'm uh, sorry, compre uh, compressor, sorry. Here you have a lot of templates to choose from. And I, I've i tried a lot of these and I leave mine on default because some of these um, boost the low end and some boost the high end. And your voice could easily end up being really, really bassy or something like that. And you don't want that. You don't want to like sound really, really bassy and blow people's eardrums out. You want to, you want your audio to sound good and crisp and, you know, just, yeah, you just want it to sound good and the way it should be. So I leave mine on default and then you can uh, apply to selection or I normally just de-click it or, and then say apply to see the button just changed to apply to file. So I do that. Look at what happens to the waveform over here, by the way, when I do that. So pay attention to that. I'm going to click on apply file. There you go. She just lowered it a little bit and that's good. That's very good because it's trying to even stuff out. So if we play this back, you can hear how it sounds. This is an audio test. See, that sounds pretty decent, except for the echo stuff, stuff going on in my living room. But other than that, it sounds pretty good. It sounds as, as good as it should be. If I had a better room or an office or something, where there weren't any echo and I actually had enough room to have my mic very close to my mouth, it would have been completely different. It would have sounded crystal clear, even cl clearer than it does now. But this is how I do it inside, um, inside uh, sound booth. Now let's have a look at Audacity. I've already recorded the, uh, just about the same thing. Let's play it through. Actually, let's play it from here so you can see. Look up here and the left, left and right channel. You can actually see in, the, in this program that there is background noise going on, so I'll stay quiet. You see that shit? So that there's there's background noise going on. And you can remove that in here as well in, in Audacity. And this is a free program, by the way. But we're going to get to why I don't use this program and why I really hate this program a lot. But um, let's select a, uh, a portion again right here. So there, there's no vocals going on here. You go up to Effects and you go down to Noise Removal right here. Now, depending on how much noise you have on your uh, your mic, you might have to uh, change these settings later on, but we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna get a noise profile. So you click on that. There you go. Double click up here. And then you have the whole thing selected. Click on effects and noise removal again. Like I said before, you might have to change these depending on how much noise you have going on in the background. I don't have to, to mess with these at all. This is default settings and I don't have to do anything with them. I just have to click OK and then it removes all the noise for me, which is really, really good. This part of the program works flawless. It is really, really good. So if I click OK to that, bam, you didn't see anything happen up here at all. But if we try playing, playing it from here, I'll be quiet again. And look up here again, by the way, guys, look up here and notice that there's nothing going on. Okay, that stuff that you just saw, I think that was me uh, moving around on my chair or something. Uh, if, but if I play from here, see, the, the, there's no noise going on. There's no background noise whatsoever. And the, the vocals sound pretty decent. This is an audio test. It actually sounds really, really clear in here. It sounds really good. Um, we're going to get to the point now that I don't like about Audacity, and that is compressors. I don't like the compressor in here because the comp I'm a musician. I, I know how to work around the compressor, but this compressor right here doesn't make any sense to me. It does, I know what a threshold is, and I know what all this stuff is, but it doesn't work like I want it to work. I believe this is default settings. No, I believe that would have been default settings. If I do that and I just click OK, Look at what happens up here to the waveform. It just boosted everything like a lot. 
if we play it back, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. I'm gonna do some post reduction on it if if it blows people's eardrums out. So let's try to have a listen to it. This is an audio test. Okay, that was really really loud. Really loud. That's not necessarily the point of a compressor. Um, I'm gonna control C that. Go in again. I just hit my table. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, going again to uh, where's the compressor again? There we go. You can mess around with these settings and see if you can figure out how to do it. What I've done before, I I've unchecked that one and checked this one instead. Compress based on peaks. Click OK to so that. She doesn't boost it all that much anymore. Let's play that back. This is an audio test. See that still sounds pretty clear. And this is why you should not. Uh, like you should not turn your mic up too much. Never turn your mic up too much. Because if it starts peaking up here and goes above it, it will distort, especially in Audacity. So don't turn your mic up too much. Um, also, if you if you keep your mic turned down, it will not pick up as much. You will have to do less noise reduction, if, if you know what I mean. So if, you, if I turned my mic up to 100, I would have had to speak a lot lower in volume and and it would have picked up a lot more noise. Therefore, my my the noise um, the noise reduction in here, the noise removal would have been I I would have had to make that a lot more aggressive. If you understand what I mean, I I hope you guys understand. I can't really word that any different. But I, it, the sense is that if you turn your mic up to max, it'll it'll start recording a lot more noise. Therefore, you have to do more noise reduction, and the more noise reduction you have to do on your vocals, the higher the chance of your voice starting to sound robotic. And that's not the point. The point is to get really clear and good audio on your mic. And uh, yeah, you can do it like this. You can also just not use a compressor and make sure that you are speaking at the same volume. And yeah, this is this is a good way to do it as well. I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, I know this was uh, kind of a long tutorial, uh, but like I said in the beginning, I do prefer Sound Booth over anything, to be honest. It is a very, very good program, very good program. And Audacity is good as well, very good. But um, I do not like the compressor in Audacity. But yeah, I hope this helped you guys out in any way or form. Uh, if, you, if you liked the video, please thumbs it up and share it with your friends. And uh, leave me some comments, guys, and take care, have fun, see you all in the next one.